Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to this kind of random recap in the middle of the week. So we ended up skipping last Sunday's recap video uh, because we just simply did not have enough time. One of our projects that we were doing ended up taking three days. <laughs> it was the trees. So we started placing and planting the great big load of trees that we got early, earlier this spring and they were big, like big root balls. And we spent a lot longer doing that. It just took a long time. And there I were three we were of us one working day. on it. I thought it was gonna be one day we yeah. were gonna have it done. Right. And... So we started, we did start late the first day because we had something else we had to do in the morning. And so we started like mid to late morning placing trees, which it takes us a long time because they're so heavy and big that we use the tractor to pick them up. Um, and so it's back and forth and the tractor doesn't go enormously fast and you don't really want it to go fast with mm -hmm. the trees on it. So it was a lot of back and forth. Uh, moving trees, placing them around, deciding where we wanted to put them. And you would get out of the tractor every time because mm -hmm. we'd want to talk about where we had placed it, if we needed to move it or whatever. So, and, and we decided like halfway through, we, we realized like this is going to take a lot longer, which took some pressure off. And we decided just to like kind of enjoy the process. And we just chilled for the rest of that time, like mm -hmm. just took our time placing things. And then we started in the second day planting and we realized fairly quickly that it was going to take a lot longer. The first two, went beautifully, super yeah. fast. And then we got to, I mean, you start getting a little tired too, cause it's hard work. And I mean, you and Paul did a lot of the heavy, heavy lifting, mm -hmm. um, because I just could, I couldn't budge the trees, like no matter how hard I tried. Um, but we got to the I think, fifth tree that day and we broke a water line, which yeah. we'll show you. I don't know if this, that video will come out before this one. Um, but that set you back too. And so then we decided, you know what, we got to break this up into two days. So we just ended up not having time but it is really crummy outside today, really crummy weather. I mean, lovely, we're getting moisture, a lot of it, which mm -hmm. is great. And the snow, uh, the mountains are getting a lot of snow, which is fantastic. So we welcome it, but it gave us some time to come in here and just catch up. Mm -hmm. So we do plan on doing our normal recap for this next week as well. So if we ever decide to skip or need to skip, I usually try to put an update in the community tab on our main channel on YouTube. That's typically the only place I will post it. Um, so if I missed or if we missed, because we are fairly consistent, we do receive a lot of messages, you know, concerned about, you, know, you guys didn't post, I'm not yeah. used to not seeing your video, which is really sweet of you. But if we do need to skip, I usually try to say something there, so. We should mention two things before we start the videos. Uh, first one is Garden Center's posting videos. Oh, you yeah, should talk yeah, about that. that's great. Um, so recently, you may have noticed some garden centers posting videos with me in it and they have permission to do it. They are legitimate. You know, we work with proven winners we have for several years. And um, so we put together, it was like four or five videos mm -hmm. going over the 2022 plants of the year. And they have like this program for garden centers where they can, you know, be part of it and they get these videos and they can post them um, or like play them. A lot of, a lot of garden centers have screens mm -hmm. where they play videos during the day or in their stores. And um, so anyway, if you do see videos coming out like that, just know that they have our permission um, and they're, we're all good. Um, we do, we've received a ton of emails and yeah. comments just like, just so you know this, I think the, the biggest one, like the algorithm just picked it up and I don't know why, but Reston uh, Valley, like I said, I think Reston Valley Farm and Garden Market or something like that. Anyway, um, that video is like, yeah, making, making the, the rounds, rounds. <laughs> and I'm sure they've received a lot of messages too, like don't steal, don't steal yeah. videos. <laughs> and we, we so appreciate you guys letting us know because there have been several times where it's not legitimate yeah. and we've had to figure out what's going on. Um, so it's always never a bad thing to email us, but I just thought I would let you all know that it's, it, it is legitimate. Yeah. Okay. Second thing we should probably discuss is the proven winners in the white pots thing, garden centers, growers. And we, have, we haven't talked about, did we not talk you about know, that earlier? You know, we may have discussed it before. I just can't remember. Hmm. I've just seen a lot of discussion about it online. Do you want to take that one? Sure. Okay, so Proven Winners this year in the United States is requiring that all growers grow in their white Proven Winners annual container. Now this isn't perennials or shrubs, this is just, well, they've been requiring that people use the white containers for perennials and shrubs, I think since the beginning. Mm. But previously they allowed growers to grow in whatever they wanted. So mm -hmm. you'd find them in four packs and you know small black containers or just whatever the growers wanted to, to use. Um, they want, Proven Winners wants everyone to have a uniform, you know, buying experience. Mm -hmm. Like every consumer experiences the same thing. Because we have gotten emails, Proven Winners has probably gotten inundated with emails um, asking like, is this a legitimate Proven Winners plant? You know, mm -hmm. I see this bubblegum, Vista bubblegum in mm -hmm. a black container. Looks kind of like a knockoff to me, you know, because mm -hmm. like, 
you know, I've seen your ads and it shows the white pot, but this is a black pot. Mm -hmm. So I understand there's the confusion there and Proven Winners is trying to limit that. I mean, imagine like buying an iPhone that didn't have an Apple logo or like going to McDonald's and getting like a styrofoam cup instead of the McDonald's cup. You know, or you're just so... Endless summer hydrangea. Yeah, in, in the plant world, summer. that's it's super yeah. common. You know, like uh, Monrovia plants have Monrovia containers. Mm -hmm. That's like a really common thing. So I don't mm -hmm. feel like Proven Winners is really out of line by by requiring this but okay so here's and remember that we are yeah. biased yeah. right because we work with proven winners so we're kind of like we understand their position i do also understand the position of growers who are saying i don't want to grow in your container for several reasons one it is more expensive mm -hmm. you know using the white pot because um, they might be able to get their own pots cheaper mm -hmm. right and tags and things like mm -hmm. that so they don't want the extra expense. I totally understand that. Um, the size is different. Mm -hmm. So like a lot of growers, they're set up for a certain size. They've been using the same size annual containers for 30 years mm -hmm. and their benches are set up to a certain size and here Proven Winners requires a different size and mm -hmm. they're like, I'm not messing with that. So I understand the growers, you know, angst, mm -hmm. not wanting to jump on with that too. So some growers have decided I'm not gonna grow Proven Winners this year because I just don't want to mess with the hassle. And mm -hmm. I, I understand that. I've seen some people that are like irrationally mad about it. And that like, seems like a bit much. I think I've heard, seen the, the uh, thing written out that they're getting too big for their britches. Yeah. Which yeah. is not. And you know, the... every company just has to make their own decisions on what they think is mm -hmm. the best, you know, marketing decision. I think it's completely normal for a company to want their own branded containers yeah. in everything they sell. Because you see that across well, you consider Everything. you consider how much every company is spending on the research, the growing time, the uh, breeding time, and then you know some plants they take years and years and years just in the breeding and growing trials yeah. to even make it to market. So then all of a sudden somebody gets to put it in their. So I've seen them in other branded pots too. Right. Like like it'll be not branded uh, another plant brand, but it'll be a garden center brand. Mm -hmm. Like. I don't know, XYZ Garden Center will have their own can because they plant, they grow on some of their own things. And so they plant this Supertunia Vista bubblegum in an XYZ Garden Center can, but it's mm -hmm. not their, they didn't put all of the like blood, sweat and tears and money into these plants right. that the that Proven Winners has. So like I can see Yeah, imagine that. you go to Best Buy and you, I mean, I'm electronic. So like imagine yeah. you go to Best Buy and you get, you know, like a Samsung phone or an iPhone in a, in like a Best Buy like it was Best Buy branded or something. Yeah. Just because you're buying it from them. Those companies wouldn't allow it. No, they don't allow First it. Off, so yeah. that's just like a, to me, that's an industry normal thing mm -hmm. to require that. But I also, I mean, I want to, I understand good, growers. Like, yeah. I understand the it's... growers being upset too. Not really them being upset. I understand them not wanting to go approve winners' mm -hmm. plants. Um, it doesn't seem like something you should get mad about. So anyway, you may see less proven winners in your garden centers this year because there's a number who are just not going to be growing proven winners mm -hmm. for the reasons we just mentioned. So yeah. anyway, it's a thing. Um, I think that it'll, my guess is it'll probably blow over in a year or two. Yeah, and people get used to it. And people get used to it and it'll just and be- And it'll come back. It's, Some it's people the, will come back. It's the way mm -hmm. everything is. You know, yeah. when they require everybody to wear seatbelts. I don't know when that was, like the 90s or- late eighties or something like that. And there was like this big hubbub, but now it's just a common thing. So yeah, you just wear a seatbelt, you know, mm -hmm. and you don't, you don't find the outrage. I don't know how anymore. you think of those things. Like out of the blue, the seatbelt thing. I don't thing. know, like my mind kind of works in analogies or like yeah, I think of does. similar things. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's like a, it's like a tick. Well, it's a good thing though. I think I understand so many things better because of that. <laughs> okay. Is that, is that all we need I think to so. Okay. I think we can do the videos. <laughs> okay. Let's jump into the videos. First one was flower bed maintenance and fertilizing in the south garden plus planting a couple of new lilacs. And I remember standing out there like kind of thinking about what I was just about ready to show you guys. And everything was so small and puny and a lot of it, especially in this northeast corner that's been mulched with wood chips, everything blends in with those wood chips. So you can hardly yeah. see what I'm even talking about. And then um, like my camera screen that I'm looking at as I'm filming is about this big. Yeah. And so I'm like, oh, I don't even know if this is gonna look like any kind of it impact. It would look so much better with black. Or like a, not Aaron's black, but like a dark. pushing for like a dark well, mulch. Well, no, I'm not really pushing. I, Cause I, I get, you know, free mulch. I love it. I love that part of it. But on the other hand, I just am acknowledging that a darker mulch yeah. would, and I, I would totally, contrast the plants more. I agree with you that dark. we've always used a darker colored mulch, and I mm. like it. It looks like, like makes your soil look really rich. Yeah. Um, the thing I love about wood chips, one, they are free. Um, two, they match the color of our soil. 
So mm. when I go out there and like use the auger, which flips dirt in a pretty good area around the hole that you're digging, once that dirt dries, it just blends in with wood chips. And there's, yeah. I feel no need to go out there and mulch again. It just always looks the same. And you know, I appreciate that so much. Your mom should use wood chips in her vegetable garden. She uses straw and she gets- You know what though? What? She loves it because, um, and, and I totally understand this, like maybe more now than ever, but it's soft and she doesn't ever have to have a knee pad, a kneeling pad. Oh. She can just well, plop right down. Well, wood chips are fairly soft too though. Not really, they're slivery and they're hard. If you hit like wrong on your knee, that's true. Yep. The straw and she's got a thick layer of it, you can just get right down on it and it's super comfortable. But she has to get down on it all the time because of all the like. It's one time. Oh. So she puts a new layer of straw down usually every year in the main walking areas and then it sprouts. <laughs> Yeah. And she's like, I just let it grow a little bit, super easy to grab and, and weed out. And it's usually one time through and she gets it all weeded out and it's fine. Huh. So she doesn't mind the one time weeding with what it, it adds. And it's a really charming, sweet look. I love the look of straw mulch and I would love to do it here in our vegetable garden, but the wind, oh, their garden is like in this little sunken protected kind of area. Mm -hmm. And we are like, somebody said we're at the top like we're at the highest elevation. Yeah, so because our house is one of the oldest houses in our town, I was told that it's actually the highest elevation in town, not like the surrounding area, but like Ontario proper, mm -hmm. the city, even though we're not technically not in the city limits. Um, but yeah, Get it's the highest wind. point. Yeah. Yeah, oh my goodness. How nice for us. Yeah, it's great. Uh, okay, so I don't remember where we were at. I don't even think I've answered any questions yet. But anyway, I cut back stuff, perennials, did some shrub maintenance, fertilized, and then I planted a President Lincoln and a, I don't know how to pronounce this, but it's Ludwig, Ludwig, Spaeth, Lilac. They're both pretty, they're both in the purple tones. First comment was from the Cats Inn. Laura, your enthusiasm is infectious. I can't wait to see the summer tour this year. It will be amazing to see all the hard work paying off. I can't wait. I can't wait to show you guys I can't wait for to show myself. I can't wait to see what it's gonna look like this year because we just started planting that garden last year. And I remember feeling toward the end, remember I commented several times, especially along that, the further north border mm -hmm. over there. Um, we really focused on kind of that corner and the layering was starting to show up and I was starting to see like, okay, this is like, mm -hmm. this is exciting. And right now it's like, like it doesn't really look like much out there. So I'm excited um, and we will definitely be doing tours through there when there's things to see. More to see now that there's more trees out there. Yeah. Oh, it's so awesome. Carly said, I think I speak for everyone when I ask, when are you going to plant all the mature trees you got? So excited for that video. You will see that before or slightly after this video. I'm not sure where that will land. Summer Moon Garden said, once your garden is more established, do you plan to do tours like P. Allen Smith does with his garden? I love watching you transform the land into something beautiful. You know what? We've been talking a lot about that mm -hmm. recently, and we have a lot of different ideas, which kind of may include tours. Um, they may include classes, like monthly classes. Mm -hmm. They may include field trips for like kids, things like that, possible events. Um, I think in the future, we do want to lean a little bit more toward that direction. Uh, we'll see how it goes. We have a lot of work to do yet for it to be ready. I don't think not necessarily for like learning things for workshops and field trips. I think we're pretty much any time because, yeah. you know, I think it's, there's things to learn along the way and that's what well, it's, those are about. You know, we don't know exactly what we're going to do, but one thing we have talked about is, um, you know, having like a fee for like a garden tour, mm -hmm. but, but having having us try to generate some like donation. Yeah. So like, you know, say it's like 25, 50, a hundred dollars. I don't know, whatever you would charge for people to whatever come to Whatever the event might be. But yeah. have the, the whole thing go to charity. Mm -hmm. And I think that would take some pressure off of us too, because it's like, look, you, the garden is what it is. <laughs> you know, we're not taking the money from it. It's, it's all getting donated. So we feel good about it because we've been blessed and we can kind of pass that on. And then also, if you didn't have a great experience, then it's like, well, you don't need to guess charity. what? You donated to <laughs> yeah. charity and so you, you know, did a good thing. Yeah. And it takes the pressure off of us because it's like, we know that we did a good thing anyway. Mm -hmm. So it's like, we're not, you know, swindling anybody out of a good time or right. like, we don't really have to or entertain. Or here, come look at all of our trenches because that's what's, we, you yeah. know, nobody wants to really see I that. Feel like, I feel like that would be the easiest, you know, way for. For us to well, do it. I think it's a good way too because I, I don't really want it to make it a business for ourselves. Yeah. 
Um, I think it would Certainly be... Certainly not something we rely on. No, I think it's a good... And who knows? You yeah, know, there may come right. a day where we need to rely on, on it yeah. as being our business. And we're total realists in that way. We always talk about all the different possibilities. But I would also like to figure out, now that I have a couple of years under my belt with our cut garden, I feel like there's ways we can manage that better, organize it better to where we can give more from that mm -hmm. space. Um, and we do the best we can now, or you know, give the most we can now. Um, but it's been kind of trial and error because I've never grown on that scale or done right. like row crops or you know the cut garden concept. I've grown a lot of the flowers before, but not in rows. You mm -hmm. know, not for cutting. So to figure things out and to work out the kinks, which there will be kinks every mm -hmm. year. They will be learning every year. I don't know. I think I don't want to put pressure on us to like to make sure that that happens. Yeah. But I also like that's the direction I want to take it right. because I feel feel like um, it will give our land purpose mm -hmm. and more purpose. And I know what we're doing now from what we read from comments and things is that it's encouraging you to garden. Awesome. It's teaching you things, which is awesome. And so I think that's all like that's our primary goal or has been our primary goal in sharing things. Um, but I think it can be taken further. Yeah. You know, anyway, Whew. we yeah. have a lot to say about yeah. that question. I didn't even realize. I'd love to sew too, said I just love a lilac hedge. It brings back memories of my childhood, but sadly the lilac borer has pretty well taken the lilacs at where I live. Is that something you have to treat for or is your area just not affected? It is something we have to treat for. So in lilacs, birch trees, and willows, those are all very prone to borer insects. Ash trees are as well. In fact, the two ashes we have uh, are, are, are riddled with borer damage from who knows? I mean, they probably, I don't know if they had been treated up to the point where we uh, moved in, but what we do, it is a systemic insecticide, which I know a lot of people cringe at hearing that. It is a synthetic. It's all about timing. You have to use it at the right time. So we wait until like right after the tree is done blooming or the lilac is done blooming, and that's when we treat. And it's an annual thing that you do, and that way you aren't like over, if you do it right before the tree blooms, then, you know, it's possible that those pollinator insects could be affected. Um, so anyway, it's about timing. It's about timing for everything. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter if it's synthetic or organic, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. um, because they all, you know, unless it's specific like BT, you know, you can spray BT, it's not gonna hurt your pollinators, your um, honeybees, yeah. things like that. Um, but even if it's an organic and it's another type of insecticide, it can kill the honeybees right along with the other ones. So you have to time it right in the day, you know, yeah. you have to do it at dusk when the honeybees are gone. Um, for the day. Anyway, we could go on about that subject yeah. for quite a long time, I'm sure. Uh, Marie said, I love that you do this work all on your own and that you're not just a pretty face behind the cameras like a lot of DIYs. So the thing is, and I do see, usually in the spring I see an uptick in comments about how I've got this huge team of people and that, that are doing all my work and then <laughs> I come in. What cracks me up is the comments of people saying like, oh, she doesn't plant all those things. But like in the video, you can see like clearly I planted, you all, planted all those like things. Like all of our bulbs last year, I planted every single bulb. We got what twelve thousand five hundred bulbs. Yeah. I planted but, like, all you of those because Paul doesn't that. like to plant bulbs. Yeah. <laughs> he would do it, um, but like the last, I think when I got the bulbs, and he was like, "Oh, here are the bulbs," and I thought, "Oh, I'll do this this year, <laughs> take the pressure off." So we do have a small team, not a big team. We have Paul outside full time and he's here all year round and he is busy. He helps with Christmas lights, putting mm -hmm. up and taking down. Um, he helps with everything. I mean, he's the type of person too that like sees something before I even notice it and gets it done. Like he wants to be busy all the time and productive, he's self-motivated. He's just yeah. a really good worker. What well, really I appreciate lucky. about Paul and a lot of people don't do this surprisingly, but like he'll see an issue, like say it's the gator. There's an issue with the gator. He calls the John Deere place and is like, hey, what's up? You know, like we got this issue, we gotta mm -hmm. get it fixed. He doesn't come to me with the problem or he doesn't come to you with the mm -hmm. problem. It's like, well, it just needs to get fixed. Yeah. You should make the call. Right. Or like something with the truck. The truck needs the oil change mm -hmm. and he just like schedules it to get it done. Mm -hmm. But like I've noticed that a lot of people are so timid about like, I don't really know what to do or, or they'll just come to you with the problem mm -hmm. instead of just like, well, just fix it. <laughs> you know, like yeah. either you can do it or I can do it. But mm -hmm. um, if you saw it, then have at. Right. Yeah, I'll get a text every once in a while. He'll say, he'll say, I'm going to get chicken feed. I noticed you were low. Yeah. I'm like, oh, thank you. I yeah. was getting low and I knew I needed to go do that, but you noticed and took care of it. Um, anyway, we also have um, a part-time helper outside, Bethany, who is uh, Paul's older sister and just as amazing of a worker. Like they both are really good and I'm so thankful. They will obviously work really well together and you can tell that they were raised like 
together, yeah. <laughs> you know? Um, anyway, so uh, she's she helps out just a few hours every week. And then of course, you know, we've always had help with uh, inside stuff. Um, that was the only thing that Aaron and I thought about, really. Yeah, like, like house cleaning stuff. Like in the beginning. Uh, and we, we realized probably, what, year two of being married, that that was the only thing that... Well, the pragmatism set in for me where it was like, I would rather work more hours at my job than work at cleaning the house. Uh -huh. And so it's just a clear cut, like, yeah, Same. like I'll work yeah. a couple hours overtime. And we've always, pretty much our jobs have always allowed us to work overtime yeah. if we wanted it. Mm -hmm. So it was just clear as day, like, yeah, work a few hours of overtime, hire somebody to clean the house. And we have the same gal this entire time. Yeah. <laughs> and she's kind of like, she's moved with us, you know, which is awesome. So anyway, um, yes, well, we do have help because there's no way, there's no way that just the two of us could do all of this and film and like have the two kids like you have to have help. Yeah. Uh, we tried to do it ourselves the first couple of years we were in this house. We did do it ourselves. Mm -hmm. Like all the outside work, all the filming, well, all of the editing, yeah. all of it. We didn't post as often and we didn't have kids. That made a huge difference, but it, we were still feeling like we were sinking slowly. Yeah. <laughs> Once Benjamin showed up, we were kind of like, how do we, how do, we do this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought when you had a baby, I'm like, you know, I'll just get one of those pack strap things them on. and I'll just strap them on and it'll be fine. Yeah. He turned out to be like the worst napper ever. He didn't yeah. eat very well. Like it was just a struggle. I remember feeling like it wasn't until June of that year. So he was born in January. It wasn't until June where I felt like we had a footing. Yeah. Because, you know, I mean, even though we had him in January, before our busy season, thankfully, though, it gave us a little breathing space there. But then we had our busy season, and it was tough. We didn't have, like, solid child care. Mm -hmm. You know, we had some gals, like, some young gals that we knew from church come yeah. babysit. Um, and anyway, it was, it, was a, it was a stressful time. It was a very stressful time, and it took six months for me to feel like, okay... I think I can manage it life now. Yeah. I feel like I've been, I don't know, in this blur of a dream, just getting it well, done. Well, you're not sleeping either. No, I haven't first, you know, been sleeping months. for, <laughs> I haven't slept a full night in like four years. Yeah. Maybe like in four years, I don't know how many nights I've actually. Probably longer than that because Benjamin's four and you weren't sleeping when you were pregnant. Either. Yeah. So you're probably going on about five years of not getting Not getting good a rest. full eight hours. Somehow you manage. Somehow, I don't know. Anyway, Sherry said, thanks for taking us along on your daily garden adventures this morning. Question on fertilizing. If slash when do you fertilize your bulbs? When planting, during bloom, or after bloom? So we fertilize when we plant. So usually biotone or bulb tone, whichever one I have. And then we fertilize if we can get to it. We fertilize right after they're done blooming. So when we go in deadhead, we'll throw some fertilizer around them. Because you know you leave the leaves for several weeks after your bulb is done blooming. And at that time, they are soaking in sunshine, which uh, they're turning into energy feeding the bulbs so that they can bloom better the next year. If you give them a little kickstart or a little bit extra help at that time, it's even better for them. So that's what we do. Uh, Laura Rose said, do you recommend waiting to fertilize and prune until after risk of snow is gone? Not necessarily. I mean, because we've been working on, on garden cleanup and, and projects since what, early March? Yeah. Probably. And we've had I don't know that we had snow in that time. We had really cold temperatures, mm -hmm. but we did wake up to sleet this morning. We had some sleet coming through. Uh, you don't want to do it too early. I mean, you don't want to do it when you still might get really cold temperatures or really crummy weather. Um, in the spring, it's a little bit, it's tough to know because like we had the whole of March, it was just absolutely gorgeous, some wind, but gorgeous temperatures. Last week we got close to 80 and then this week we're like the lows are in the mid twenties and we are getting up. I don't know what the temperature, I gotta see what the temperature is supposed to top out at today. 43 is our temperature today. So, I mean, it can vary wildly and you never really know. I feel like most of our plants come out of it just fine though. Uh, Dina said, thanks for the proud berry info. I have one that I keep walking by and thinking, should I prune this down? It does seem like the wrong thing to do, but after watching you tackle yours, I'm going to out with the pruners to give it a 12 inch cut. Uh, you know, that's the thing about the proud berry coral berry. I always feel compelled to show that every spring because it was one of those things I actually had to, I um, called the grower. I'm like, I don't feel like this is the right thing to do. Should I be doing this? Am I go going to harm the plant? And she told me, yep, you I mean, even though it's a woody shrub, it grows up to three to four feet tall and wide every single year. 
but it to get it to rejuvenate you got to cut it back and cut any of the weak stuff out like little weak stems at the bottom and it just gives it a ton of energy to put on a really good bloom set and a really like amazing berry show. We get amazing berries from our coral, coral berries. Yeah, we do. They're just awesome. Next video is planting salad and herb window boxes. So the three window boxes on the south side of our house do receive a little bit more light, even though they are kind of an, uh, under an overhang. It's a lot brighter over there. I thought it would be fun to take them a little bit of a different direction. I typically don't plant our window boxes up for spring. Usually just the Versailles ones, like the one under the portico, and then the one by our kitchen. And then I leave the rest of them, which there are one, two, three, four, five, six more. I usually leave them empty until summer plant plantings, but I've just felt like the urge to have spring color everywhere, even if it's just with like six packs of lettuce and violas. I mean, those are inexpen inexpensive to buy. But with those three, I decided to do all edible flowers and edible plants. So the uh, littlest, the two foot window box was herbs, I think there's some lettuce in there and some pansies. And then the other two have like Swiss chard and spinach and greens. Um, anyway, I think they turned out cute, especially once they put on a little bit more growth. Uh, the Plantastic Nerd said, I watched one of your earlier videos yesterday by chance, the one where you were showing your veggie garden and what you had planted. I believe it was from a last year's April tour. At the end, you told us that we don't have to have a specific place in our gardens designated for food production, but rather, we can pop edible plants wherever we want. I love how you stay true to your tips and recommendations. Um, yeah, that's the thing, you know, edible plants, they look pretty. Um, I love to pop cabbage into flower beds just because of the bold. I mean, the structure of a cabbage plant is so pretty. Of course, they don't last all year, but then once you, you know, pull it when you're ready to harvest, then you have an opportunity to plant something else in that space, which is fun to have kind of that re revolving door. I don't want that in every flower bed. There are some areas I just want to plant and just have it be done, and I don't want to have to maintain or plant anything else in that spot. But sometimes it's fun to have those areas. So long as you have proper light, which for most edibles, except for like the ones I planted in this one, I used um, herbs that can tolerate lower light and then greens and things don't normally need like full sun. Um, so yeah, depending on what you're tucking into flower beds, you wanna make sure there's enough light and your ability to water. You need to make sure you can get water to it. Stacy said, who laughed when Laura said the wraparound porch is way down on the list of projects to get done? Every time she says that, the project seems to get started. I wish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That one's, that one's deep on the list though. It is, because it's gonna be a complete overhaul, you guys. We did, we've talked about it before, how we would like to renovate our house. There's a lot of updating that needs to happen because mm -hmm. the electrical right on the old side Yeah, the is, 1919 part, the electrical is old. Yeah. Um, and then the plumbing, even on the new side, uh, it, we're getting pinholes because it's copper mm -hmm. pipe. And so they, we, the plumber has suggested we swap it out with PEX mm -hmm. at some point. And we kind of think like, well, you know, if we're going to start opening up walls, like maybe we should try to do one fell swoop mm -hmm. as opposed to just one project at a time. Right. Get everything done. Yeah. So we have started working with an architect a little bit just on some design ideas, but it's going to take a while because to get our ducks in a row for that sort of project, it's going to be down the road. So those window boxes might hang out for <laughs> a lot longer. That's the whole reason I talked about the wraparound porch because uh, every year I say we're gonna take the boxes down. Uh, one, to eliminate some planting because filling up nine window boxes, especially if you're doing them every season, that becomes a little bit ridiculous. That's why I typically skip some. The wind is just like moving the door around yeah. right now. So glad we're in here right now and not out there. Um, anyway, I don't know where I was at with that, but I think I mentioned that in the video that the porch will happen at the time the porch happens, the window boxes will most likely go unless we can figure out drainage for them because we don't want to ruin the porch. Um, stay, uh, Samantha said, I love the idea of using edibles in window boxes and it is absolutely gorgeous. I know you have lots of cooking videos, but have you ever considered writing a cookbook that contains recipes for things you grow in the garden? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I intend to stay in my lane, yeah. <laughs> which is plants and gardening. I do love to cook uh, when I have time, if I'm organized and I have the ingredients on hand and when I have the time. I used to have a lot more of that on hand and I don't have as much now. So like I used to love to bake and I used to like every week try a new baking recipe. I used to love to meal plan and try new things out all the time. And now like we're lucky if I make like tacos yeah. <laughs> or like something really basic. Um, I do try to utilize and I- Kids I'm gonna... will change your life basically. Yeah, yeah they will. <laughs> and you know, we're busy with yeah. what we do too. I mean, it's our fault as well, yeah. you know. Um, we keep ourselves pretty going pretty 
late in the day. Anyway, I am making more of an effort to use the stuff out of our garden. <laughs> You know, a lot of it and a lot of it gets utilized. I try to give away what we don't use. So it's not like we're not eating it or I mean, it's not like it's going to waste. It's either going to somebody else, going to the chickens, which they need to eat too. And I like to give them fresh stuff or we're eating it. But I'm trying to like incorporate more of that on a really regular basis if possible. But anyway, yeah, no cookbook with recipes. That's for sure. We have been approached by publishing companies to do a garden book, but again, staying in my lane here. Yeah. Allison said, do you ever take suggestions or have a place for suggestions for video topics? Yeah. That's the way to do that would just be shoot us an email. No, we don't technically, but yeah. just shoot Comment an email. Comment section or shoot yeah. us an email. If we see, especially the ones where we see a lot of the same question coming through or a lot of the same suggestion, you know, yeah. those tend to stick out a little bit more. Sure. But. Adam said, can you show an example of what the wraparound porch would look like? They're super common, common here in the South and I don't understand how one would fit on your house without a lot of reconfiguring. Probably would take a lot. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna take some reconfiguring for sure, but that's kind of what we're hoping for in the end. What we've asked the architect is uh, to like symmetrical windows, yeah. more colonial. Yeah. Um, it's close on our house. Like it's like they started with that idea and then didn't finish. So there's windows in a lot of odd kind places. Kind of though. It's like the old side of the house though is a farmhouse. Yeah. I don't really want a farmhouse. I'm not like super huge into that style. And then the addition has been made, like the details around it have been made to feel more colonial, which mm -hmm. is the way I'd rather take it. Yeah. Um, so we're trying to go a little bit more that direction if possible. So we'll see what he comes I, up with. I think, I don't know what it would look like. I asked the architect to see if he could render it out, but like what would it look like if the wraparound porch was larger? Mm -hmm. um, and, and the architect suggested that we actually raise the roof uh, like a foot or two mm -hmm. to get to make it feel like the upper level. If you look at the front of our house, looks very short. Yeah, like the windows come up to the soffit. Yeah, like right. Is that what right. that's called? Oh, I don't know. Just the, the bottom of the roof. The bottom of the roof. Like mm -hmm. the windows go pretty much all the way up yeah. to that. And I think what he wants is a little bit of breathing space to where it goes up, but then the, the roof is a little higher than that. Which we were happy with because even if we have to scale the idea down, um, we kind of wanted like all the possibilities because we've always talked about we need to change the pitch of this thing. Like pitch of the roof yeah. is all wrong. <laughs> right. Well, and that's I think what we're trying to do is like go with like the deluxe plan where you know you look at all the possibilities and look at like maybe what it would cost to do that and then you can pick and choose the things that are like okay this is the most important this is the least important mm -hmm. um, but if you start from like let's just change it all because mm -hmm. i think what we're going to do is we're going to get to the point where we're going to we're going to have a plan that's not feasible yeah and we're, we're going to have to choose the things that are the most important to yeah. us and I, i'm okay and with what that. makes sense to like because we still think about resale and yeah. you know what because I mean, you never this, know what your life is going to do yeah. like if you looked at your life well i guess now it'd have to be like seven or eight years ago you mm -hmm. would not plan on making youtube videos yeah yeah for sure uh dw ohio said what was the cleaner you used last year to clean the window boxes it seemed to work beautifully i'm there's a little gnat in front of me just in case you guys are wondering it's like totally taunting me um what is that called is it like a scrubby something? Scrubbly? Or? No, scrub yeah, scrubbly. Scrubbly? Mm. Euro. Mm. I should. Euro scrubby? Yeah, it's Euro scrubby. Yeah. And somebody, one of you guys sent that to me. I and don't know that you can buy it in the US. I don't think so. So whoever sent it to me, if you want to send me another one, yeah. <laughs> I would pay you for it. I still have some of that first one, but it is like the magic. It's the only thing that takes stains off. And I, I see tons of suggestions from you guys about other things that I have tried that do not work. And Euro Scrubby was like, it does take some elbow grease still, but not, not like, like with magic erasers. And I was trying like a bunch of other cleaners and stuff too. And there was nothing would budge the stains that were on that, on those uh, window boxes. Uh, Corby DeForest said, do you ever think you will have all the projects that you want to do on the property done? Aaron, that's a good question for you. I don't think you really ever get to that point because there's always something on the horizon that you're... Gardens have a life cycle too. Yeah. Plants have a life cycle. They don't live forever. There are some things that will live for, you know, hundreds of years, some trees and things. Yeah. Um, but there are a lot of things that start petering out and not looking good um, and or start dying after a certain amount of years. Um, it depends on how they're cared for too. Sure. But I, I, I don't know. 
I think we'll constantly be refining. Allison said, off topic, but can we get a Dahlia update? I'm trying to figure out what I should do next with the Dahlias I've started inside. Um, as far as Dahlias go, in terms of like the tubers we have in storage, I know this wasn't the question, but I have been seeing some questions um, about tubers uh, because I'm gonna be sending some tubers to some people. I'm not getting them out of storage until May. So I still have a little bit more to divide, but we don't plant until May. And if I were to, I need to drag them all out of storage at the same time, because when I get ready to, like I'm giving my parents some, I'm giving a few people in the area, I'll be sending some to Jenny. Uh, and I think she's ready to plant like earlier because she's a higher zone than us, but I'd have to get every single crate out because I want to give a good assortment of variety. Mm -hmm. So I'll just do that at the time we are planting them in May. And that way I think it'll streamline the process. So that's where tubers are out. I still have three crates to divide. So I'm not even done dividing yet. And then the ones inside I actually have buds. Wow. Like I pinched a few of them. I wanted to kind of run an experiment. I pinched a few of them, which I typically don't even pinch them and I get so much production out of them. Um, but I just wanted to see the difference. And then some of them have buds and like getting ready to bloom. So I think like the biggest one I have, I wish I would have brought one in, but it's like maybe this big with foliage and then there's a bloom stock up top. So I'll show you in a video here soon. Gail said, your windows always look so clean. Where do the window boxes drain to? Um, if you look close at the windows, you will see hand smudges, like <laughs> smears on a lot of our windows. Um, I wish they were all clean all of the time, but you know. Uh, but the window boxes drain right onto the sidewalk. <laughs> Yay. Yeah, and make the sidewalk look horrible. So that's one of the things, like I would love to power wash and repaint, and maybe that would be a good interim, like maybe that'd be a good like spring cleaning project to mm -hmm. do once a year. Uh, they were painted at one time before, probably well, not for the same reason because they didn't have window boxes there, but they had pots sitting on it. Those um, sidewalks were poured after the fact. Like, I don't know how many years after the addition was built on, but they mm -hmm. weren't poured at the right grade. They yeah. like go toward the house and then water settles in puddles. So they're not level. Um, anyway, it makes for some pretty crummy looking, looking staining. I try not to worry about it too much. Michelle said, I see a definite shift in your planting this year to more edibles. May I ask what has inspired you to make this change? It's what I'm in the mood to do this year, I guess. I think it's a good thing too. I think a lot of people's minds have shifted to edibles and probably mine has shifted a little bit in that direction as well. I don't know, we're about ready to haul off into our summer plantings, which will be less edibles than I'm doing now. Spring's easy to do that with uh, because the edibles you're dealing with don't require a long growing period and they don't require a ton of space. Next video is planting grapes, onions, and cabbage, plus a honeyberry update. So it's kind of a little bit of everything in that video. Mm -hmm. I think I showed the honeyberries first, which are blooming right now. I actually have a honeyberry, like an actual berry, on the ones wow. in front of the greenhouse. I took a picture of it the other nice. day. Um, showed that, and then we took a look at the carriage lights I bought for the flower shed. <laughs> <laughs> Decided they were too nautical, and I'm gonna take them back. Still haven't done that yet. Um, and then we planted two Suffolk red, seedless red grapes on our grapevine area, um, ran drip to those, and then I planted a whole bunch of onions, walla wallas, and then a row of cabbage, which got nailed in a 25 degree night. The onions look great. The cabbage, I think, will come back. Like the top leaves are kind of like loose. Um... Burned or? No, uh... well, yeah, they kind of turn like tan, mm -hmm. and they're kind of like pale, like, oh, like kind of see-through, but the interior of the plant Still looks really firm and nice. So I don't know. I'm going to give them some time. We'll see what happens. Um, Kelly Ruse said, since you've asked for opinions, I would go with a different exterior bracket, something a bit larger in scale and with the electrical boxes installed so high, which that I wasn't there for that. I, I thought I just had them rough in some holes for lights. I thought there was like a standard. Had I had I been there, it's totally my fault. I would ask them to do it a few inches lower. But you know what? I didn't. I didn't do it live and learn. Do you think maybe that they were thinking you were going to want the same type as what's on the barn? In which case it would be that gooseneck that kind of goes down. Yeah, but yeah, maybe. Maybe they did because they installed those for us. And yeah. so maybe they were thinking, but the chain coop light is different. It's more of like a, it looks more yeah. like the house lights. But they didn't install that one. They didn't install that one. Yeah, maybe that's what they were assuming. So like, it's not their fault either. I just thought there was, I, I don't know. Anyway, so I would have had them installed a little bit lower had I been there. Um, so I will be finding one where the uh, installation's at the top of the light and then the light will like hang down from that. And I initially thought I didn't want to go um, over 12 and a half inch lights. I kind of held something up there like a, an object that was 12 and a half inches so that I could see if I liked that scale because it's a really narrow area between the doors and the windows and I don't want it to look um, too big. 
but I think I can go a little bit bigger than 12 and mm -hmm. a half. Um, I think maybe like a 14, maybe it will be max for that. But I'm super particular about proportions and stuff. So we're gonna just have to see what happens there. Maria said, are you going to put a small restroom in the cut flower house? I wish. I wish we had small restrooms all over our property, like one in the barn, one out in the cut shed. You know, it's not that big of a deal with the gator because you can zip around pretty, pretty quick. I yeah. mean, it would be nice, certainly, yeah. but, but you know, being able to move pretty quickly, you can mm -hmm. get back to the house pretty fast. Yeah. Uh, Bascu 16 said, do you ever worry about freezing temperatures affecting your onions? No. They were fine and 25 is how low it got after I planted them and they worked completely fine. They might get a little brown on the tips, but they'll be, they'll be fine. Last year when I planted the ones I had grown inside, I didn't harden them off long enough and I put them out and they completely flopped over at ground level. So I thought that they had died. Um, like they turned brown, crisped up and were done. Like there was no living thing showing up on the top of the soil surface. And I went and bought another flat of onions because I thought, well, I just had killed my onions, put them out too early. Uh, when I went to go plant the new ones in their spots, I'm like, the roots are still like perfect. I mm. bet you these are gonna still grow. And they did. Mm. I think that's, we had a huge onion harvest because I planted the other onions, I bought them. <laughs> so I planted those along with the ones that were already in the ground. Um, so I think plants are a lot more resilient. It sets them back, but they are a lot more resilient than sometimes we give them credit for. Maritza said, just a question, what do you do for weeds? So in a lot of, in our flower beds, in our, uh, any planting areas in the cut garden, we don't spray anything. So we have, um, we hand pull or we have hand tools. Uh, Paul does a lot of it and he's got it in a zone system and he likes the hula ho because you don't have to bend over. You can just, you know, like just pop weeds up and if you keep on it, they stay away. Uh, we have done a video, however, however, on how we maintain our gravel driveways and keep the weeds out of the dra gravel driveways. So maybe we can link that down below. It talks mm -hmm. about burnout, which is an organic, um, herbicide works really well if you but we switched from burnout to something else what was the thing last year that we were using well that was still burnout no it was um oh dead weed brew dead weed brew. yeah yeah what is the active in that i don't remember it's but... also organic yeah but we had really good luck with dead weed brew if you mix it at the high concentrate right um and then lawn weed brew for in the lawns yeah it was the same with it's an acid Mm -hmm. uh, it's some kind of a caprylic maybe, capric, yeah. caprylic acid in the dead weed brew. Uh -huh. And then the lawn weed brew is like an iron, excuse me, an iron FE, I think. In some areas we do use landscape fabric, but it's pretty rare. Uh, only underneath the Arborvita hedge and then underneath um, like the boxwood hedge in our Versailles garden uh, because we have a bindweed problem. And if bindweed gets up in your our, your hedges, you can't spray it out mm -hmm. and the, you can't pull it out either. So and you have to spray under it. like our greenhouse. That's true. We did put it a layer underneath that. Because you're not growing anything. Also in the pathways in our raised bed garden. Yeah. Best decision we've ever made right yeah. there. Well, <laughs> among others. Yeah. But yeah, putting landscape fabric, the actual raised beds open to native soil. We cut the landscape fabric out. Like we put the landscape fabric down the whole area, set our raised beds down and then cut the, the fabric out. Um, but it really keeps down the weeds in there. Julia said, can you clarify why you need so many outbuildings? The office studio, the brick greenhouse, the cold frames, the sheds, how do you determine the need for each building? We've actually, we utilize, well, the Hartley's not done yet. That's gonna be more of a living extension. We'll do tropicals in there, tropical plants, um, and a lot of other things. I have, the cold frames are gorgeous right now. The, le the heads of lettuce in the cold frames are so pretty, but that one's not done. So it, I don't know like the flow of like the workflow in that space or how we use it um, yet. But the studio, like we're in here today, I use this room a ton. Mm -hmm. Paul uses it too, because this is a heated room. Um, and when he's out here in the winter time and stuff, like he can come in here where it's heated and it doesn't have to be in the freaking cold barn. I mean, the rest of the barn is really cold in the winter time. Um, so it's really nice for that. Uh, I do, you can see the grow lights behind me. Um, I used to do a ton of seed starting underneath grow lights here. This is the first year I've done a lot of it in the greenhouse since it is heated now. That, the heated greenhouse is like, that is my, my jam. Like yesterday, it was Sunday, I made a, a latte and I was in my pajamas and I went outside during Samantha's first nap in my pajamas and I just did a bunch of potting up. I potted up seedlings, I watered stuff, I fertilized all the seedlings and I was just out there. It was warm. I like had not done anything to myself at all. It was just, it was lovely. But we use that a lot to hold over annuals um, this year to do seed starting and to do some experiments. Like I had beans just about ready to start producing. They're all in bloom. Um, and then the cut, 
flower shed. I mean, it's for aesthetic purposes out there too. It's gonna to be pretty out there, but it's also gonna be a really practical spot because we use a lot of things out there. I need buckets, I need cutting tools, I need, um, like I wanna store a lot of my vases out there. And when we do a lot more of our bouquets that we give away, I wanna store jars out there so they're just ready to go. And I don't have mm -hmm. to like go to the loft or go down into our basement and find all that stuff. I want to organize so we're more streamlined and it makes it a smoother process. So, so far we've like found a really like big need mm -hmm. once we have put something in like we use it yeah um seasons with anthony said i think aaron i think i heard aaron say something about garage shells do you guys have garage shells we don't yeah we don't personally but uh we've you and i have gone to some not like recently not but, really no but there's a lot in our area yeah your mom usually does one your mom yeah. and sister and we've joined in on a couple of those yeah. like a joint yard sale yeah I always like garage sales. They're, my sister does them like a beast. Yeah, she does. Like every year. She's good at it. Yeah. yeah. I think one of our Christmas trees in the house I got for like $15. She texts me. Yeah. Like, there's a Christmas tree here. It looks like everything's here. You want me yeah. to pick it up? Oh, and the red rug in here. She picked that up for, at a yard sale for me for $25. Yeah. Brittany Sue said, please excuse my second comment, but I have to ask, how did the clips hold on your material covering your crops? Thank you. Uh, thank you. Can you add them to the description down below? Those are little clips from Gardener Supply. And so you've got your hoops, you put your fabric over the hoops and they're just almost like clothespins, but they're um, like better shaped to hold on to the hoops. And uh, so the gal that um, I talk with at Gardener Supply on occasion, she sent out the hoops and the clips and she saw where I put all of that stuff. And she texts me and she's like, I'm sending you more clips. <laughs> Like you're gonna need a lot of clips with the amount of wind we get because we had 60 mile an hour winds the other night. Mm -hmm. And um, a couple of my hoops, like one, uh, two of them popped out of the ground. I popped them right back in the ground. And those clips held on the fabric pretty well. Um, there were a couple of spots where I had to reattach, but I think once I add more clips, it will be So fine. maybe like 40, 50 mile an hour winds is where you're gonna start seeing that they're gonna pop off. Yeah. Right? Well. They weren't like popping off. It was the fabric, but I think it would need a heavier duty fabric oh, was sure, my like thing. Oh, sure, like the fabric might rip. Yeah, because I was using like the lightest weight fabric there is because, and I, they're past the point now, I, I don't even have them covered anymore. The ranunculus and anemones, and maybe I should. <laughs> we just heard a wind gust outside. Yeah. <laughs> maybe I should have them covered now, but anyway, yeah, I think having a heavier cloth for the, to hold up to the winds. But you know, at that point, if you have a heavier cloth that's providing more of a windbreak, it might be worse on the hoops. Mm -hmm. sure. I don't know. So far, everything's going okay. Uh, next video was helping my mom plant a butterfly garden. And that was fun. It's always fun to get out of this garden and go to somebody else's garden, somebody else's space. We planted up a flower bed that runs parallel their swimming pool where they used to have crab apple trees, which were absolutely gorgeous, but they were a huge, huge mess for the tree or for the pool rather the trees were a huge mess for the pool uh, because they had blooms with petals that would fall in and then they had berries and then all of their leaves um, and then of course they attracted a ton of birds and um, so in the end they decided that they wanted them and they were starting to heave um, the rock wall just like the junipers at the end eventually did and they had those removed so anyway we planted that top flower bed with some uh, butterfly topiaries that i had showed you in a nursery video like an, a tree unloading video or something like that earlier on and she wants to have it be her butterfly garden where it's butterflies obviously and then plants that attract butterflies and then also a specific color scheme so it's going to all be like white and butter yellow kind of colors uh, Marina said, I lost my mom more than 10 years now. This video reminds me so much of her as she is a gardener too. Thanks to you, Laura and mom, for bringing me such ha happy memories of my own mom just by watching this video. I cannot wait to see those butterflies fly away and bring so much joy to this space. Oh, that is a really sweet thing to hear. Uh, Priscilla said, where can I find those butterfly topiaries? I have to have one or two for my new garden, but I'm, uh, that garden bed I'm making, will they ship to Alabama? My parents' garden center does not ship. I don't know if maybe somebody in your area gets things from the same place. It's a wholesale grower called Bountiful Farms. They're out of like somewhere in Oregon, mm. <laughs> more on the Western so side of Oregon. probably not shipping to Alabama. <laughs> maybe not, but I don't know. Isley ships all over the place mm. and they ship evergreens and things like that. Sure. So you never know. Yeah. Uh, Michaela said, are you top dressing with miracle Grow? That's something we don't usually see in your videos. That's very true. I always had such good luck with miracle Grow products. How do you feel about them? Okay, so a couple of things. First off, we used a miracle Grow as a topsoil. 
And the only reason why we use that, my parents usually use a bagged compost. I can't remember what brand it is. It's a bag compost. Anyway, they use that, They're, they have it on order and just haven't received it yet. And we really wanted to, to kind of give a finished look to this flower bed in the end. So my mom just kind of looked, okay, what palette do we have the most, of? like what product do we have the most of that's not selling or whatever. And so that's what she brought home. So that's why we used that. It was real pretty though. Mm -hmm. um, it had like a moisture control in it too. I don't really know. Typically they go for just organic products out there, but, um, I have used potting soil in the past from them, and I don't know if any of you guys had noticed the change, but at first it was fine. Um, I didn't notice any kind of like bad results from it or not anything like spectacular either, but then I noticed them starting to use a ton of wood filler. Like I'd get slivers when I used it. I could smell, like it smelled like wood, like um, wood shavings. Uh, and I don't know if it's still that way because I haven't used it in a really long time, mm -hmm. but I started to really, like the bags were even lighter. Mm -hmm. Um, so anyway, I don't know if the, it was just like a one-off or if they really did change the mix or if it's changed back. I don't know. And, but I hear of a lot of people who have good luck with it too. Um, anyway, Elizabeth said, what size drip tube did you use? I thought they were all quarter inch. No, for a bed like this, we use half inch because quarter inch, you just can't run it long enough. Half inch, you can run like around 500 feet or so. Every time I cannot remember. I'm like four to 500 feet. It, it's going to depend, but that's like... A, you know, a rough. reference, okay. a rough, you know. With estimate. the quarter inch, it's like 20 to 25 feet is max. Yeah, sometimes less than that, I think. Yeah, it depends on like flow, water flow and pressure and things like that, but half inch is what we ran. Susan said, or we didn't run it. My mom and dad ran that before. I didn't have anything to do with running the drip. That was quite nice. I love to arrive somewhere and just like get to put in the plants and mulch it and make it look pretty and not have to do the like all the prep work. Yeah. Sometimes that's nice. Susan said, how far away does your mom live from you? Looks like a great place for kids to run. It sure is. They're about 10 minutes from us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not far at all. And your parents are like three minutes from us. Yeah. Um, HJ Carpentier said, I remember you saying that you and Aaron don't have nicknames for each other. I noticed you have a nickname from Benjamin. I wonder if you have one for Samantha. <laughs> yeah. So Benjamin, I call bud and dude. Sometimes mm -hmm. it comes out like booed or dud. Yeah. <laughs> Occasionally, as I try to say both of them at the same time. Um, or Benjamin, we call him Benjamin a lot. Yeah. Uh, Samantha, we call Samantha Grace um, a lot. We I, call her baby girl. We call a her lot. baby girl, and we call her Samantha. Yes, yeah, because Benjamin. Because Benjamin pronounces it with an F. It's so cute. You call her Mantha Grace. Yeah, I do call her Mantha. Yeah. Sue said, "How is your mom's back? Hope she didn't overdo it." Um, you know, we're pretty careful about that. She is too. She doesn't want to mess anything up for sure because she felt like what it was like when she couldn't move around like especially right after her surgery she had back surgery last summer mm -hmm. um so she has been super duper careful and we've all tried to pitch in wherever we can to make it easier so like for this project i ran the auger she never touched the auger um i also uh touched all the bags of miracle Grow. she didn't touch one of those so i loaded them all in the gator and then i also poured them all and she moved her kneeling pad and, and spread it out which is a little lower impact you know i don't know how much of the up and down she can do probably not a lot more than we did that day. Um, but I thought she did pretty good. Mm -hmm. Like she, she and I both planted the stuff that was in there. So anyway, we whipped through it pretty quick. And I think she, we had a cocktail in the end. We were both feeling pretty good. Um, next video, this is the last video from this week was refreshing perennial containers, planting raspy berries and the greenhouse pots. So the two pots by where we park, I had hookera, sage, ivy in there from last fall. I cleaned up what I could, whatever had survived, and then popped some pansies in with it. And then I planted the raspy berries, which I had picked up five of them down at the garden center. They are a hybrid cross. I know some of you guys thought I just misspelled raspberries, but it's actually raspy berry, hybrid cross between a strawberry and a raspberry. So they grow like a strawberry, fruit looks like a strawberry, but they have a raspberry infusion in the flavor. So I'm really excited. They're blooming right now. I'm excited to taste some of the fruit. And then I potted up the greenhouse pots, which turned out to be a little bit more, like it was a little bit more work than I had kind of anticipated. I knew I wasn't gonna do a total pot, uh, like change out of soil. I was just refreshing what was there. But what I didn't anticipate was that we had, and I forgot, we had plugged a lot of the drip, like taken a lot of the rings off, our drip rings from the pots and, or just clipped them off. And anyway, I had to do a lot of drip repair that I just wasn't really anticipating. It didn't add that much time, but it's just another layer. Anyway, they, I think they turned out pretty. I did mostly yellow and blue like I've done all around the garden, but with a little touch of pink 
in these. Rita said, there's just something calming and satisfying about watching someone dig their hands in the dirt and then plant flowers. Thanks for sharing your tasks with us this morning. It starts my day off with joy and sweet memories of my parents and their gardens. Have a great day, everyone. Don't gardens just do that? Like gardens, there's just something so unifying and so like pleasant and peaceful and nostalgic about them. Yeah. I'm glad that it, it's that way for you guys. It makes me happy. Uh, Dennis said, regarding the pots in front of the greenhouse, do you leave them out during the winter? I live in Ohio Zone 5 and mine freeze and crack. Do you have that problem? Nope. I never have, even when we were a Zone 5. Mm -hmm. We get most of our containers from Unique Stone. Uh, we do have a couple from Henry Studio as well. Margo said, is it bad to have ants in your pots? I was cleaning out a bunch recently and found lots of ants and even some other bugs. Is it best to get rid of all the soil and start fresh? I just planted right over the ants and then a lot of you guys said that ants means aphids. Mm. I don't see, there was no presence of any other insect in the pots. They were little sugar ants. It, they weren't like the type that bite or anything. Um, we don't really have a lot of those. We have some red ants. Yeah. My parents do. Oh, I remember you guys. So everything seemed enormous. When you're kids, everything seems enormous. So when your parents give you a chore list, which we had a, an extensive chore list every Saturday and then a shorter one on Tuesdays, and then we had our daily chores. That was our schedule. So we had like our animal chores, of course, every day. And then um, Tuesdays, we'd have like some extra stuff, like maybe working in this or that flower bed or clean out this animal pen or whatever. And then Saturdays was like our long one. And when I saw like weed the orchard wall, it's that wall of rocks. It's not too steep that you can't climb on it, but like maybe a little scary if you're too young. The worst part about it is that they have like mounds of red ants, like pouring out of different areas of that rock wall. And so us kids, we would usually trick my little sister into poor Monica. We'd be like, we'll do all the other chores if you just do this one. And it was all about numbers to her. Yeah. <laughs> you just learn, you learn the weakness of the other person. And she's like, oh, I only have to do one chore while you do the other six. Okay, <laughs> so you'd have to go out there and try to dodge the red ants. Anyway, all that to say, I, you know, I'll keep an eye on the pot, see what happens, but everything in that pot looks pretty darn good right now. Uh, Roy said, if you have a minute, I got a question about planting bulbs. Is it not too, is it too late this spring to plant some dahlias and gladiolus bulbs? No, it's actually not time yet. We don't plant those until May here. You want to wait until after the danger of frost has happened. So typically like, well, the first year we planted dahlias, I think it was June still had great production out of them. It depends on your growing season though. Um, but usually May is the safe time. It's a little early yet. What if they are, what if that person is in a, if they're, if you're in Texas a, or California? Yeah. If you're in a warmer zone, um, yeah, you may be able to do it now. Oh, my mom lives in Chalice, Idaho. It's still pretty cold. I probably would wait then. But if you are in a warmer zone, for those of you, you may be able to, it just kind of depends on your area. Ask somebody at your local garden center. Um, Bethany said, are you going to mulch or lay straw under the raspy berries? I probably should do that. I did that the last time I planted strawberries, in, which ended up, I planted out in um, another area. Um, I think I've got some extra straw. Yeah. Thank you for the reminder. I didn't even think about it. Uh, Jane said, what is the hose reel behind you in the beginning of the video? So hose links are retractable hose reel, which they started out tan color, mm -hmm. 82 feet of hose. They are... And they also have a 50 footer as do well. Do they? Yeah. What's the hose diameter? I uh, usually go for five eighths. I think this is a half, a half inch, right? So... I think it's a little bigger than a half. Well, that's five eighths. No, it's like an in-betweener. Really? I think I remember talking to him about it one time. Really? And it's like a, like a non-standard size hose. Oh, interesting. Anyway. The uh, hose, the bib fits. It's like a... What is that, five eighths is the normal no, size? No, three quarter inch is what the, the thread is. The thread, yeah. yeah so thread it's a normal, standard, it's a normal thread. It'll yeah. fit, you know, any hose bib. Yeah. So you can pull this hose out and then it kind of like clicks as you go, like click, 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 click. And then when you're done, you water your things. When you're done, you give it a slight tug and it just reels itself back in. <sighs> My only complaint is that 82 feet is the longest they have. But honestly, how big of a reel would you need? And yeah, I don't know. I mean, I my personal opinion, hose link is like hands down the best. I mean, there might be other brands of you know retractable reels that are good too, but um, but just the idea of a retractable reel. Mm -hmm. And then if you have to get bigger, the Ely hose reel seems like it's the most well built reel yeah. for longer than eighty two feet. It's not. It doesn't retract on its own, but it, they do have like the. We've got both the two wheel 
right? Mm -hmm. It's a two wheel. Um, and then like the big one. That's yeah, the four wheel. Four wheel. Uh, and those are handy. We have to get those out occasionally in the winter time, especially when we don't have hoses out, um, but we need to reach a distance to water pots during the winter time, we'll do that. Um, Anyway, they now, uh, Hoselink makes them in charcoal, which we're swapping a lot of our tan ones in the more visible spots mm -hmm. with charcoal ones. And they're really nice because they kind of just disappear. Yeah. You don't really notice them, except for you did notice it in this video. So maybe they're more noticeable than I thought. Yeah. They're less noticeable than the tan ones. And the very last question is from Jackie. The Arborvitas are looking so full and gorgeous. Is that their mature size? We're going to install an evergreen hedge this year, but we don't want to want anything huge. This size is just perfect. So those right now, how many feet do you think they are? I would say those, like the majority are maybe around like eight feet tall. Which they top out between 10 and 15. So they're gonna get quite a bit taller, mm -hmm. but not a ton wider. They get three to five feet wide. I'm hoping they get five feet wide. Mm -hmm. We'll see what I happens. I think they will. I, I think, think they will too. Because they're in full sun. Yeah, and with how they've grown yeah. thus far, I think that they'll get on the higher end. But yeah, 10 to 15 high, three to five wide is the range. And that's it for this week's recap video. Sorry for the weird scheduling with this one, but I'm glad we found a little pocket of time to get it done. I do notice it's getting brighter outside, but the branches are still blowing pretty hard. It's probably pretty wet out there. Yeah. We'll go test it out. I have some more transplanting I need to do behind the Hartley, and we were supposed to start the floor in the Hartley today, mm -hmm. but maybe the weather's throwing things off. There's always something throwing off. Yeah. <laughs> throwing that project off. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and we will see you very soon in the next recap video, probably just a few days away. Yeah. Bye. <laughs>